Cyber Threat Intelligence. This is my weekly roundup of the latest news in cybersecurity. I will be doing this series every week, so do hit that subscribe button if you're interested in keeping up to date with the latest news. Let's get straight into it. So the topics that we'll be discussing today are Worm GPT, a new AI cybercrime tool, then the latest Apple zero day vulnerability which hit the news, and then finally Microsoft, which is where a validation error in its source code allowed malicious actors to forge authentication tokens. All very interesting topics and I have time stamped everything down below, but I do recommend sticking out for the whole video as there's lots of valuable information. However, we'll be first starting with Worm GPT. So unless you've been missing for the last few weeks or months, I think it's fair to say you've seen the rise of artificial intelligence. And it seems that that rise in artificial intelligence has caught the attention of malicious actors who are now leveraging this technology for their own advantage, leading to accelerated cybercrime. And I think that's a given for anything that seems to get popular or we see any advances in technology. Of course, these malicious actors will jump on it and you will see that rise in crime. According to the researchers, Worm GPT has recently surfaced on the underground forums. Worm GPT specifically utilizes generative AI and is being advertised in a way for adversaries to launch sophisticated phishing and business email compromise attacks. This tool so far has re been referred to as a black hat alternative to GPT models, which therefore means it's been specifically designed for, for malicious activities. It allows the criminals to automate the creation of highly convincing fake emails that are personalized for the recipient. So you can imagine that this increase in level of personalization then enhances the chances of the success of the attacks. And the fact that Worm GPT operates without ethical boundaries then raises further concerns about the threat posed for generative AI. It even allows novice cyber criminals to swiftly and easily launch large scale attacks without requiring that extensive technical knowledge. So you can already see how dangerous that is. This then serves as a reminder for the growing challenges were posed by AI in cybercrime and the need for this robust security measures to mitigate all the risks. So very dangerous and very big news that's come out in the cyber world there about Worm GPT. I'm sure we'll see many more updates as this continues going on and it gets in the hands of malicious actors. So do stay up to date with my videos on this topic further. Next, we'll be looking at the Apple zero day vulnerability. So Apple released updates for iOS, iPadOS and macOS and Safari web browser to address this specific vulnerability which I've given the CVE number for on the screen. It allows threat actors to achieve arbitrary code execution through specifically crafted web content. Apple has since improved checks and addressed the WebKit bug and prevented potential exploitation since. The flaw was discovered and reported by an anonymous researcher, but there are limited details as of yet about the attacks or the identity of the threat actors involved. However, Apple did mention that they were aware of reports suggesting active exploitation of the vulnerability. Just to then put this into perspective and let us know why it's important, the release that they've made here marks Apple's response to the 10th zero day vulnerability it has addressed since the beginning of 2023. It comes a few weeks after patches were rolled out to fix three zero day vulnerabilities, two of which were exploited in an espionage campaign known as Operation Triangulation. So that there itself just shows you the importance of these zero days that are being addressed here and how many are rapidly coming out as we're only just halfway into 2023 now. So that covers Apple zero day. Let's have a look at the final topic, Microsoft. So Microsoft has revealed that a validation error in its source code allowed a malicious actor known as Storm0558 to forge authentication tokens using a Microsoft account consumer signing key. This breach then affected approximately two dozen organizations. The group then created forged authentication tokens to gain unauthorized access to Azure AD Enterprise and MSA consumer accounts. The breach specifically targeted Outlook Web Access and Outlook.com. 
The issue then stemmed from a validation issue that mistakenly trusted the MSA consumer signing key for signing Azure AD tokens. Microsoft has since corrected this issue. The method by which the actor acquired the key, however, is still under investigation. So there's not any details on that just yet. So since then, around 25 organizations, including government entities, associated consumer accounts, were singled out in these attacks. The objective was to gain unauthorized access to email accounts and extract mailbox data. No other environments are reported to have been impacted. The US State Department tipped off Microsoft about the incident after detecting anomalous activity related to exchange online data access. And Storm 0558 is suspected to be a China-based threat actor engaged in malicious cybercrime activities. However, China has since denied these allegations. Since discovering the campaign on June 16, 2023, Microsoft has taken a number of actions. They have identified the root cause, tracked the campaign, disrupted malicious activities and strengthened their environment. The issue has then been mitigated on behalf of customers since June 26th. The exact scope of the breach, however, is still unclear. This incident highlights the stealth nature of China-based threat actors who conduct cyber attacks seeking sensitive information. However, Microsoft has faced criticism for its handling of the hack and for restricting access to detailed audit logs behind additional licensing barriers. So a very interesting topic that I'm sure we'll see more come out of from a threat intelligence point of view. Hopefully you've really enjoyed this video from a cyber threat intelligence perspective. It's a new one that I'm starting on this channel. So if you did like it, please do let me know. It massively helps me out and I'll continue making this type of content. If you're interested in cybersecurity or anything related to that, do join my Discord with the link in the comment section below where we talk about all things cyber, whether you're just entering the field or you're interested in this type of news. Once you've done that, please do hit that like button. It tells me you're enjoying this type of content and I'll make sure to continue making it.